Are you tired of getting those over-the-air update notifications on your Samsung Galaxy smartphone or tablet? If so, then you'll be happy to hear that we can block these firmware updates from automatically downloading in the background. That way, you aren't surprised by a major firmware update just because you decided to reboot the device. This process does not require root access and it shouldn't impact any other features of your smartphone or tablet. Before we can dive into this guide, we first need to have some things set up ahead of time. But we'll be blocking these over-the-air updates on Samsung Galaxy devices by removing a couple of pre-installed apps. These services are likely what is handling the firmware updates, so uninstalling them from our default user account will prevent them from being pushed to our device. I'll be doing this with a free application called Kanta. This does not require root access, although you can bypass the Shizuku requirement if your device is rooted. So for everyone who does not have their phone rooted, like mine here, we're going to be using the Shizuku application. Now, if you are not familiar with what Shizuku is or how to set it up, then I'll be sure to have a dedicated guide linked in the video description below. That way, we don't draw out this video longer than it needs to be. Now, after you have the Shizuku service up and running, you can then sideload the APK file for the Kanta application. And I'll have that app and all other links mentioned here today put in the pinned comment under this video so that they are easy for everyone to find. I recently did a video here on the channel showing you how to downgrade from the latest version of One UI back down to Android 14. Not everyone is happy with the state of Android 15 from Samsung right now, and I can't really blame them. It took the South Korean tech conglomerate months to fix bugs to the point where they thought the update was ready. But I'm seeing lots of bug reports from the community about your average battery draining issues all the way to the display not working just because they got it replaced. And since I'm going to assume that you followed the outline from the requirements section, the first thing that we're going to do is launch the Kanta application. With this open, you're going to see a list of your first party and third party applications. So they are all going to be listed here. But we're going to be using the search box up here at the top to filter through them. And the first thing that we want to filter for are the letters WSS. It's going to reveal a package name labeled com.wssync.mldm. And you can see it's actually related to the software update. So we're going to make sure that the checkbox next to it has been checked. And then we're going to tap on the trash can icon down here in the bottom right corner. If this is the first time you are using Kanta, you're going to see a prompt here asking for permission to use Shizuku. So grant access to Shizuku, because again, we already have that Shizuku service up and running. And then we confirm we want to uninstall this app. And you'll see it instantly disappear because now it's going to be listed in the deleted tab. And with that app removed, the next letters that we want to search for are S O A. And again, you're going to see this is related to the software update as well. And again, we're going to tap on that checkbox next to it and then tap on the trash can icon 
in the bottom right corner. Again, we confirm we want to delete it. Now you're going to see both of those apps listed in the deleted tab. And you should be done. With these two apps removed, the One UI firmware for Samsung Galaxy devices will not be able to receive that new over the air update for Android 15 or Android 16 for that matter. With these two disabled, you will no longer get any over the air update notifications. I do have to point out that downgrading and avoiding over the air updates is not something that I generally recommend. Those security patches and bug fixes can be critical and they could be the only thing standing between your data and a malicious hacker trying to get into your device. But I understand that not everyone likes the newest software running on their phone. And this is especially true when you consider Samsung's Android 15 update flat out broke the phone people paid hundreds of dollars for, sometimes over a thousand dollars. So I'm going to trust that you know what you're doing and hope that in a few months after Samsung has had a chance to iron out some more of these issues, that you'll reconsider keeping your phone on an older version of Android. Now, the last thing that I can suggest is that you enable developer mode so that you can go through here, find a toggle labeled auto update system and toggle it off. This usually doesn't do anything on most devices, but it's good to go ahead and uncheck that toggle just in case. Now, I do appreciate each and every one of you who has stuck with me to the end of this video because it means a lot to see so many of you watching through to 100% completion. Just please do not forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel as well for more Samsung Galaxy tips like this.